When a prison inmate finishes serving his or her time, the chances are roughly 50-50 they will be arrested again within three years. That 2013 statistic was cited by Rick Ramish, head of the Colorado Department of Corrections, to a legislative committee last December. One thing that fights recidivism is for inmates to gain skills while they're incarcerated and then turn those into a living once they get out. And that is the aim of Colorado Correctional Industries, a company created by statute to oversee prison employment and training in an array of industries. One of them, an organic farm growing tilapia, sells its harvest to Whole Foods and other groceries. But not long ago, some Whole Foods consumers began to question whether they shouldn't be informed that the fish is coming from a prison industry. Reporter Mary McCarthy has recently been to CCI headquarters in Canyon City to have a look at the farm, talk to those involved. This is not a new place, is it? That's right, the tilapia operation, in fact, has been around since 2001, and the media coverage over the years has been largely positive, describing the program as an opportunity for inmates to learn a valuable skill while they're serving out their time. Now, that coverage since 2009, at least, was pointing out the fish was being sold at Whole Foods. It's only over the past year, however, that we've seen a backlash from consumers wanting to know more, with some asking for answers and many announcing the product via social media. It's a response that's easy to understand. The U.S. does have laws that prevent the import of goods produced by prison labor from countries like China. So the gist of the consumer response has been, shouldn't we know if we're buying goods produced by prison labor right here in the United States? And so this Colorado fish farm is at the heart of this labeling debate then? That's right. So we asked for access to the facility and we got it and we went inside what may be the most controversial prison labor camp in the U.S. I'm in charge of making sure all the tools and everything are in, make sure feed buckets get refilled. Sometimes I help pull fish to get ready for them to get processed so they can go out to Whole Foods and whatever other places that they have the fish that go. Christopher Lewis started working on this tilapia grow about two months ago. I've learned a lot about the fish. I mean, how they grow from little fingerlings to uh, the size of, they wanted to get into a, a pound and a half before they're processing. Saul Ibarra has been working here as a driver for 10 months. Out in the free world, I am a driver, and that continues to keep my skill up to where I need it to be. I help the guys out when I'm not running errands on driving. I take the fish over to processing and load them up in the greenhouse. The tilapia operation is located on the grounds of a massive Canyon City complex of six prisons, but it's in fact owned by a private firm, Quixotic Farming. There's a lot of uh, good people that are just trying to get their life back on track, and we're providing them with uh, hopefully a, a little bit of training so that whenever they do exit this facility, they have a chance in the outside world. The fish grows are a major source of pride for Colorado Correctional Industries Director Dennis Dunsmore. He was given the top job in March after working for CCI for 25 years. Now we do about, um, about 1.2 million pounds of fish a year. CCI says its goal is to provide job skills to inmates and quotes the recidivism rate as proof of its success. The Colorado, the regular uh, general population, the, the offenders that do not work for CCI, um, their recidivism rate right now is 46.6. Um, uh, and, and when you come through a Colorado or the correctional industry program, uh, we uh, cut that number in half. Tilapia is just one of dozens of industries on this facility, ranging from furniture and fiberglass factories to raising water buffalo, whose milk is turned into mozzarella, or raising goats, some of whose milk is turned into goat cheese, which is also sold by high-end grocers. The idea is, is that we're going to take offenders, we're going to teach them a skill, we're going to keep them busy, uh, we're going to make a profit while we do that so that the program is self-supporting. CCI says the profits are largely invested back into the programs. Prisoners' pay is minimal. It varies from 74 cents to $4 for a full day's work, but corrections experts say factors other than cash motivate the inmates. They learn what the criteria may be, and they work towards it. And it can be a long time. And then they get there. And then they have to maintain it. And if they screw up, even just once, they can be sent right back to nothing, right back to general population with no programming. And that kind of incentive-based rehabilitative programming gives prisoners a sense of wanting to do something, be productive, belong to something. 
Colorado Correctional Industries says that inmates here are learning valuable skills they can apply on the job market after they're released. But critics say that's not necessarily the case. Some question how useful the skills the inmates are learning really are when it comes to landing a job in the real world. In many cases, there is no job placement plan. In other words, you might work in a prison industry learning certain skills, but once you get out, there's no transitional program that then links you to employers who are willing to hire you because you have those skills. You basically walk out the front gate with maybe a little gate money. You might have the skills, but that doesn't mean you have a job. Dennis Dunsmore admits that the lack of a formal job placement program is CCI's biggest failure. I think that the piece that we're missing is, in a lot of cases, is that we need to create the vocational training up front and then bring them into the real world setting, work setting that they can actually test those skills and, and produce and hone them uh, to finding a place on the street that is that would like to hire them um, when, they, when they get out and, and work with them. But overall, Dunsmore is unabashedly proud of CCI's work. He points out that some of the products, from water buffalo patties to leather saddles, do bear the CCI logo. So why not, again, the tilapia sold at Whole Foods or the goat cheese, why not have that label on there? Well, it's because it's up to the, uh, we, our customer is the person that buys our fish or that owns those fish, we just take care of them. But you could put a regulation that whoever you're selling to has to do that. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, I'm okay with that. It may be something that legislation would want to say in a, in a statute that it has to be marked that way. I'm okay with that. Meanwhile, Saul and Christopher say that for them, tilapia farming has been largely a positive experience during the dark time, that is, serving time. It keeps us working and out of trouble. I mean, as far as them making money, I mean, that, that's their success. And what about the fact that, say, Whole Foods, they're making good money off of this fish and you're not. Does that seem unfair to you? Sometimes it seems like it is, but at the same time, I'm paying a price for a crime that I ultimately committed. Really interesting to see the inside of that fish farm, but uh, what does Whole Foods have to say about all this? Of course, I reached out to Whole Foods, gave them several weeks to respond. They refused to go on camera, promised a written response. Over a week ago, they said that was forthcoming. It's been radio silence since then, so we don't know what their answer to any of these questions are. They're not are. sure they want the association. Whether, and whether or not they would label, really, is the big question. Maybe continue selling it, but labeling it, so we simply don't know. However, the middleman in this deal is a Denver-based company called Seattle Fish, which buys directly from CCI and then distributes to grocers that include Whole Foods. Seattle Fish were very forthcoming. They went on camera with us. I just didn't have room to fit it into the report. They said that they fully support CCI's mission, that the, they're not buying this at a cutthroat rate, that in fact they could buy it for cheaper, but they support the mission. Also, the thing to know about Seattle Fish is that they do hire former inmates. They've hired at least eight so far, some of them in high level uh, fish production capacities. So, um, so they're another player in this. So the Colorado Correctional Industries uh, is not making a great profit. It actually exists as a prison employment and training program. Right, really the controversy is over the fact that this is being marked up on the marketplace, but not over profits being made by CCI in terms of most of the experts I spoke to. And most of those, I should say, even the ones who are very critical of prison labor, like Alex Friedman, who you heard in the report, do believe in these programs. They think they can be improved and expanded, but they do believe in them. They say prisoners should be doing something, but that ultimately prison labor will come under scrutiny, particularly in a country where we have a history of race-based uh, forced labor, slavery, and a country where the legal system does disproportionately incarcerate black and brown people. Very interesting report. Thank you, Mary McCarthy.